On April 17, 1964, Ford Motor Company launched the Mustang, a small, inexpensive, European-styled sports car. The baby boomers were coming of driving age and wanted a small, sporty car, and the Mustang delivered just that. The Mustang was an instant success, selling over 22,000 cars within the first 24 hours and over 1 million cars in the first two years of production, becoming an instant leader in the automotive industry. The Mustang is still building its legacy today as it enters its 50th continual year of sales thus making it more successful than all of its competition. For the development of the Mustang, Ford's biggest selling car was the Galaxy, a big, comfortable family sedan, and Ford knew that the majority of their profit came from this one car. Ford knew that they had a car for the parents, but what they didn't have was a car for the young adults. Ford did have the Thunderbird, but that was seen as more of an expensive luxury cruiser. So Ford wanted a cheap, sporty car. So Ford, behind the leadership of Lee Iacocca, started the development of the iconic Ford Mustang. wanted a small sports car to rival Chevrolet's Corvette and the very popular British sports cars. Thus, the Mustang was born. Originally, the Mustang was named after the World War II plane, but it was eventually named after the horse. This caused for the iconic running horse emblem. The Mustang started its life completely different than the 1964 variant that, the wor that would become one of the most popular cars of all time. The original Mustang prototype started out as a small, mid-engine, two-seat sports car with a four-cylinder engine. The concept Mustang received a lot of attention from the masses, but with its mid-engine design and high-tech features, it was just too complex for production. At this time, Ford was also working on a four-seat sports car, also named Mustang. This car resembles the Mustang of 1964 that we all know significantly more than the original concept of 1961. The Mustang II concept, as it was officially named, shared a few design features with the 1964 production car. The production car and the Mustang II concept both carried four seats, dual three-bar tail lamps, and side scoops. The Mustang II was also four inches closer to the ground than the, Mus than the production Mustang. The Mustang I and the production car shared little to none with each other. On April 16th at 9 p.m., Ford aired the same commercial on all three major television networks. The commercial announced the release of the Ford Mustang on April 17th at the New York World's Fair. This was Ford's first international press <laughs> Standard transmission, dozens of options. But as standard equipment, you get bucket seats, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, all vinyl upholstery, padded instrument panel, and full wheel covers. Even though Mustang is a dream, its low price is a beautiful reality. Test drive one right now at your Ford dealer. Pleasant dream. While at the New York World's Fair, there were reporters from Puerto Rico, Canada, and the United States. But at the same time, the car was being introduced in 11 other nations. At the World Fair on the 17th, Lee Iacocca, head of the project, delivered a speech. In his speech, he talks about how much excitement the car has developed. He reads letters from fans with questions and comments. One of them is from a Louisiana high schooler promising to start a Mustang club. There are still hundreds of Mustang fan clubs around. Also, in his speech, Lee Iacocca revealed the starting price of the Mustang. Starting at $2,368, it was a little more expensive compared to the Chevrolet Corvair Monza, but because of the highly customizabi customizability of the Mustang, it obliterated the Monza in terms of sales and customer support. The Mustang was also faster and safer than the rear-engine Monza. The commercial caused so much excitement that some people camped outside of their local Ford dealerships to be the first in line for their Mustang. In the commercial, Ford really stressed the customization of the Mustang. The, customiz the customization of the Mustang to make it as inexpensive or as expensive as possible is what started the legacy of the Mustang and made it so important today. The Mustang was so popular, in fact, that they sold over 22,000 models within the first day. By the end of 1964, they had sold 263,434 cars. By the Mustang's first anniversary on April 17, 1965, Ford had sold 418,812 cars. This was a massive amount of sales compared to the other vehicles at the time. By the second anniversary, Ford had sold one million cars. The first two years of the Mustang's production were the most successful in the car's entire 50-year history. 
It wasn't until 1966 that Chevrolet responded to the massively successful Mustang with the Camaro. The Camaro and Mustang have been battling ever since. While the Mustang has had continuous success from 1964 until 2015, the Camaro stopped production in 2002 before reviving the car in 2010. The Mustang reached these massive sales numbers because it was one of the first cars to offer a large options list, where you could personalize your car however you wanted. Engines ranged anywhere between the 170 cubic inch V6 to the 289 cubic inch V8, ranging from 101 horsepower to almost 210. Either could be paired up to Ford's 3-speed automatic or their 4-speed manual transmission. By 1965, the Mustang had over 70 different options to be selected. In 1965, they introduced the new 2 plus 2 fastback to the lineup of the already very successful convertible and hardtop coupe. It is because of all these options available to make your Mustang yours that it became an instant leader in the automotive industry and secured its legacy, with starting the options list available on many different cars today. The Mustangs was prized for its highly customizable options list. Because of this, Ford started to produce specialized models directly from the factory. The most popular model that came directly from Ford would have to be the 1969 and 1970 Boss 302 and the Mach 1. The Boss Mustang was Ford's factory race car. The Boss came with upgraded suspension and a 302 cubic inch V8. The Mach 1, on the other hand, was Ford's attempt at a super high output car. The original Mach 1 came with a 429 cubic inch monstrous V8. The Boss Mustang ceased production in 1970 and had a limited run number run in 2012. The Mach 1 ceased production in 1971 and had a limited number run in 2003 and 2004. The original Mustang caught the eye of Carroll Shelby. Carroll Shelby was an American race car driver who started a tuning business. All he needed now to tune was a car. The Mustang caught his eye because of the aggressive look and the large options list. So he struck a deal with Ford and began production of the very iconic Shelby GT350. The GT350 ran from 1965 to 1967 before Ford bought the rights and started to create cars from within their factories. The Ford Mustang has had success since day one. The Mustang has been a prime example of the automobile adapting with the times. The Mustang had a very successful first generation stretching from 1964 to 1971. In 1972, an oil crisis struck the US, causing people to become more interested in a small economic car. The Mustang adapted to this by becoming smaller, lighter, and dropping the V8 in favor of smaller, more economical V6s. After the oil crisis ended, the Mustang came in on a new chassis, nicknamed the Fox Body. It was a little larger and heavier than the 1970s Mustang. It also came with a 2.3 liter turbocharged 4-cylinder and Ford's famous 5.0 liter V8. The Fox Body Platform Mustang ran from 1978 to 1993 before Ford switched over to a new Fox 4 platform. For the Fox 4 pl platform, Ford dropped the 5.0 and the 2.3 in favor of the 3.6 liter V6 and the 4.6 liter V8. The Fox 4 platform ran from 1994 to 2004. In 2005, Ford had a full redesign to the Mustang. They went back to the original style with the more square body and a retro front end and rear end. The new retro design Mustang ran from 2005 to 2014, before Ford did another major redesign. For the 50th anniversary of the Mustang, Ford wanted to announce the car in a big way. So they did as they did 50 years prior, they put the Mustang on top of the Empire State Building. The new 2015 Mustang is a tribute to the 50-year-old design that won the hearts of many people around the world. The Mustang has been a leader not only for Ford, but for a whole breed of muscle and pump cars. The Mustang's legacy of being an inexpensive, sporty car will live on forever. Also, the options list that the Mustang made so popular is in almost every car on sale today. This is all possible because of how popular the Mustang was and still is. The Mustang will go down in history as one of the most important cars ever produced, but Ford doesn't plan on, on the car stopping production anytime soon with the introduction of the 2016 Shelby GT350, the next installment of the raced ready Mustang.